Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today we are engraving some rainbow text onto aluminum. This is a really special backfilling method that I've been working on for a long time. And while we're working on some pretty garbage aluminum today, when you do it with the right metals, you can get a really nice result. I am going to be taking you through step by step the entire process on how to get an engraving backfilled just like this. We're gonna go through the whole thing. I'm gonna walk you through it. It's not as hard as it looks, and uh, you get a really, really cool result. So stick around because we're gonna get started right now. Okay guys, we're ready to get started and we're gonna need just a couple things. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna need is a piece of metal. We're just gonna use a scrap aluminum today. You're also going to need some black masking tape. Um, this can be gotten on Amazon, it's inexpensive and uh, it's gonna work with our fiber laser really well because the fiber laser is gonna be able to engrave this away because it's black. Uh, so it's gonna absorb all of that energy and we'll be left with a nice mask. So that's how we're gonna use the black masking tape. And uh, lastly, we're just gonna use this squeegee type thing uh, to make sure that we can get that masking tape down nice and hard on the surface. So we're just going to take a piece of black masking tape and we're going to apply it to the surface, just like this. And we're gonna press it down as hard as we can. And we're gonna wrap it around the edge there because uh, we still want this to sit nice and flat. So we want this to not have any wrinkles or bubbles in it. And uh, then we'll take our squeegee and we'll just go ahead and press down really hard. We don't want any spot left behind. We really want to get this whole entire thing nice and flat. Again, being sure to get rid of all the bubbles. That's the key thing here. We don't want any leftover space because any air pockets that we leave in this are going to allow paint to spill over onto the surface. So we just want to do a really good job making sure that that gets pressed down all the way. And uh, this is what we should have. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna head over to the fiber laser and we're going to engrave. Okay guys, so we're not getting too in depth on EasyCAD today. If you wanna check out um, a little more in depth information on EasyCAD, you can watch literally any video. We get a little more into it. Um, but this is just a standard hatch. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you that really quick. If we just select our text and hit hatch, uh, we're doing the two hatches. So hatch one at 45 degrees hatch two at negative 45. Uh, and we are using Snakey because Snakey gets deeper way faster. And uh, we don't care what the actual finish of the engraving looks like because we're uh, coloring this when we're done. So um, Snakey's gonna get the job done quick. It's gonna get us our depth uh, and we can move on. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. And our text is hatched there. And we're just using our general aluminum setting. Uh, it's gonna do great for what we want today. Uh, so 1,000 uh, speed, 80 power, 25 frequency, and we're going to start here at about 30 passes, and that's going to really give us the depth uh, that we're looking for in order for this effect to uh, really be effective. We may start at 20. We'll start at 20, uh, and we'll, we'll take it from there. We may not actually need 30, so I'm just going to cut my outline, and we're going to get this engraved, and then we can move on to the fun part. Okay guys, for this next section, we're just gonna be using a package of basic paint brushes. Nothing too fancy here. Um, the thicker brushes work a little better, but we could really use any of these except for the giant fan one to get this job done. We also need some enamel paint. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is testers and uh, we do want enamel paint, okay? We don't want acrylic. Acrylic dries soft and enamel dries hard, uh, which means that it's gonna stand up to a lot of the same stuff that the metal's gonna be able to stand up to, the acrylic paint tends to just fall out of the engraving. So you do wanna make sure that you get enamel paint uh, and both this and the brushes are linked down below in the description if you need them. Don't try to use these out of the box. Make sure you give them a really good shake before you begin. Once the paint's all shaken up, you're ready to start painting and you want just a very thin first coat. We don't wanna go crazy. I'm just gonna go around the letters here and dab it in just like this 
We're not slopping a huge amount on. You don't want any pools or puddles to collect. So something just like that is gonna be perfect. You can still see the recession from the engraving. Once you're done, just make sure that you've gotten all of the inside walls of your engraving because if we forget those, it's going to make our work look sloppy when we're done. Next, we're going to just take it and set it in a place with good airflow so that this can dry. I really like placing mine in the CO2 and turning the exhaust on, but if you don't have that, uh, just throwing it in front of a window will be more than enough. Also, don't forget to recap your paints because these dry out incredibly fast, so we want to make sure we get those recapped. Okay guys, so I just pulled this out and it's looking really good. Um, it looks like we're ready for our second coat here. It's still a little shiny, but pretty much dry. So I think we can go ahead and add our second coat. We're gonna do the same exact thing we did the first time, but we're gonna add just a little bit more paint uh, this time. So instead of that very, very thin surface layer, uh, we're gonna let it just kind of pool up just a little bit, uh, just to get kind of like that nice enamel look on it. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that right now. So I did just want to point out here, there is a little bit too much paint in this eye. So we want to make sure that we get some of that extra pooled up paint out and I'm just dragging it out and then painting the tape to uh, disperse some of that excess paint. And that looks really good. Try to get all the bubbles out with the brush. At the end of the day, you want a nice level, flat kind of solid pool of enamel because that's exactly how it's going to dry. So. You can even rock it back and forth a little bit to get some of the pools to spread more evenly between the letters. And that's it guys. This is exactly how you want this to look. So we can see nice little pools in there. It's not overflowing. We don't have giant bubbles, uh, but we've definitely left kind of like a, an enamel fill on those letters. So with that done, this is gonna go right back into the CO2 to uh, air dry with the exhaust a little bit more and we'll check on it in a little bit. Okay guys, so I just pulled this out of the CO2 and it looks pretty dry, uh, dry enough for the next step. Uh, you can see there's still a little bit of a gloss on there, but it looks mostly solid at this point. It's mostly solidified and uh, that's what we're looking for. You can see some dark spots in the uh, A and the W there with the yellow paint. We probably, would want to do one more coat if this was a real customer project, but for the sake of time and the video, we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape off this now. So far so good guys, but we do have to do a little weeding. A little dental tool like this will go a long way in helping us remove the tape from these smaller areas. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. While you're doing this weeding, you just want to make sure that your tools you're using to weed out the masking tape don't actually scratch the enamel, especially if it's still a little soft. You want to be extra careful. A pair of tweezers can really help you pull off some of the super small stuck on pieces of tape that you aren't able to get off with your hands. So there we go guys, the weeding is done. And uh, lastly, we're just going to give it a quick sand. You can skip this step if you want to and call this good. but. Um, I think some of the smaller edges in here could just use a tiny little bit of sanding. Um, so that's the last thing we're going to do today. So here we go, guys. Last look at the uh, pretty finished product before we ruin it with sandpaper. So we're going to go ahead and give this a try here. If you're gonna sand it, you don't wanna to push too, too hard because you don't wanna sand the enamel right out of your engraving. And then we're just gonna go ahead and clean this up with a finer grit. And we can take it and go wash it one last time in the sink. And here you go guys, there's your final result. I think it looks pretty good. Um, you know, there's a few things that, again, I would keep in mind. One, our metal is garbage. Uh, this is awful, awful aluminum. 
uh, two. I think it could have used a third coat. I would do that differently next time. And number three, I think we could go in and actually polish this up with like a Dremel tool or something. And that would actually make it look, um, you know, much nicer than it does right now. I'm not gonna do that on the video today, but it's definitely an option for us if we wanted to go in uh, and just kind of buff this whole thing, enamel included. I think that could look really nice. Well guys, that's all I've got. I really hope you learned something this episode. I hope that you can find a cool way to use this awesome black masking tape technique to get some cool colored text on your engravings. If you guys got value out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Let other people know that there's good content here. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we post a video. If you love the channel and you want to keep seeing videos like this, consider signing up for the Patreon. I can't even imagine what this channel might look like without the backing of our amazing Patreon supporters. If you want to join our incredible patrons by backing this channel, there's a link in the description right next to the link to our Discord page, our amazing community where people love talking about lasers, sharing settings, and genuinely helping each other out. So if you're looking for somewhere to grow and learn, uh, the Discord community could be an invaluable resource to you. I I highly recommend checking it out. Lastly, all of the tools and equipment we use to get this effect are linked down in the description. Check those out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm out of here and I will see you in the next one.